Good morning to everyone. Welcome to our open day presentation in Bangladesh. So let me greet you in Bangladesh as my colleague taught me on how to say this. Assalamualaikum to everyone. I hope I pronounce it right. And um, hope you are doing fine at this pandemic time. My name is Andre Son from the marketing department of and I will be your host for the day. So just a, a few housekeeping rules before we start. Questions will be entertained at the end of this presentation. If you can mute your microphone to uh, keep the background noise, we have our um, chat button, uh, which is located at the right side of uh, uh, your computer. So if you have any question, you can write it down and then we will be able to answer this after the session. And if we cannot endeavor to reply with your question, you can email us and we will be able to get back to you after this presentation. So for today, we would like to um, acknowledge the presence of some of our future uh, VIT students from Bangladesh and um, for the time that I ha they have spent today this morning. We have our, also our agents from um, all over Bangladesh and VIT members and colleagues. So today um, we are going to discuss to you and tour about VIT, um, our courses, some information of um, with our scholarship and student experience in Australia. So um, let me start by sharing you um, a PowerPoint, which was um, so welcome to our open day with um, Victoria Institute of Technology. So Victoria Institute of Technology has three campuses all over Australia with um, state of Melbourne. So um, we have our Melbourne campus, we have our um, Sydney campus and Adelaide campus. So with our location in Melbourne, we do located at, um, in Queen Street where we have three buildings in there. So we have the 123 Queen Street. Um, we also have the 118 Queen Street and the 235 Queen Street. And in Sydney, we do have, um, we are located at 333 Kent Street. Also in um, Adelaide, we are located at 14 Adam Street. And in Melbourne, we do have our um, VAT cafe where we do our um, kitchen training. And that is located at 413 Johnson, Johnson Street, Abbotsford. And with our carpentry workshop, which is located at 407 High Street at Lawler. Go to the next slide. So I just uh, presented uh, a geographic photo in here where um, we are located in Melbourne, which is the um, 123 Queen Street. And at the end of this presentation, we'll be sending you a copy of uh, where you can reach us. So it's um, either with our social media and um, VIT addresses in Australia. So that's uh, um, a, just a photo of our kitchen in Abbotsford. So let me um, give you a bit of information about um, the history of Victoria um, Institute of Technology. So um, VIT has been since 1998 um, and it is recognized. And, an RTO, it's a registered training organization, which uh, provides nationally recognized qualification and short courses. Leading education. So VIT's mission is to provide students with high quality education and training, giving them life transforming knowledge and skills. So with VIT ambitions, it aims to create education networks of excellence and for life long learning where people as to grow and with skills. So with our accreditation, we do have um, accreditation under uh, TEXA, which is for higher education. Uh, it's a tertiary education quality and standards, sorry, my slides are moving. Um, and the ASQA, these are for uh, vocational courses, which is Australian Skills Quality um, Authority. So um, yeah, VIT has been um, established in 1998 as a IT training 
um, consultancy and attains its um, RTO status in 2000. Um, on the year 2004, um, VIT uh, di diversifies training that includes hospitality, business courses, automotive, and graphic arts and English. And in the year um, 2014, it attains the TEXA accreditation to deliver the Bachelor of Information Technology. So um, VIT has been running for um, more than 22 years now. And just to give you an overview with our um, nationality diversity for our higher education, we have at least 92% that are coming from subcontinent countries. So these are um, Bangladesh, um, Nepal, Sri Lanka, India, and Pakistan. And um, the 8% of that one is coming from Southeast Asia. Go through with that. So in terms of our uh, facility, we have our um, library computer labs that are located um, in each different houses that we have. And um, some access with our um, Melbourne Library, um, which is located in 253 Flinders Lane, which is uh, like five minutes away from the campus, and other um, suburban libraries uh, where you can get free resources for, um, you know, for information about your studies. And of course, we have our um, facilities are for our commercial career, which is in Abbotsford and for our carpentry workshop. Now, um, it's an honor for, uh, for us to you know, um, introduce our um, speakers for today, um, which is, I have um, Alan Griffin in here, uh, a former Australian politician of the Australian Labor Party. So he was um, a member of the Australian House of Representatives and now a member of, of BIT. Um, I would like to welcome as well uh, Professor Sidney, who is our Executive Dean of VIT, and his primary uh, role is to look at the quality learning and teaching um, of the student experience. So uh, prior to um, joining VIT, he was the Executive Director of Tertiary Education Commission in Mauritius, and also he was a Professor of Higher Education Development at the Center of for um, education futures um, in WA. So I would like to uh, welcome as well, Professor Arun Patil, um, a pri uh, prior in joining uh, VAT. He was the director of postgraduate coursework studies and director of uh, Deakin Engineering Education. Um, now he's our Dean of Engagement and Partnership at VAT. Um, also an honor to um, introduce to you uh, Abdul Mamun, who is originally from uh, Bangladesh and he's our, our general manager at uh, BIT. So uh, Mamun's experience as a general manager, uh, which demonstrated a history of um, working in an education management industry. And um, I think he's with BIT for um, more than 16 years now. So uh, welcome. So for our um, open day program today uh, with VIT, we would like to share with you um, why VIT, um, what are the, you know, the COVID responses that we have with this COVID, our student experiences, um, courses and pathway internship, and VIT um, scholarship and fees. So um, I will now hand over to um, Alan Griffin to discuss to us why choose Australia to study and our VAT COVID-19 responses of VAT. Over to you, Alan. Thank, thanks, Anne. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Yeah, um, well, it's a great pleasure to um, take part in today's meeting uh, and to talk to all of you about uh, the opportunities that um, are available to you to study here in Australia um, and also particularly what the current environment is um, and so I think also some of the advantages um, that um, BIT uh, provide in those circumstances, although a lot of that will be discussed by some of the other speakers. I guess the starting point I'd, I'd go with is essentially this. Um, in this environment, I guess there's, there's what we know, which is historically the position Australia has as being a world-class destination for international students. 
But then there's also the question of what we're now dealing with, and that is a great deal of uncertainty. Um, but if you like, the, the advantages Australia had remain and continue, and in fact are a firm basis for going forward in terms of a choice that you may wish to make. When we talk about Australia as a destination for, um, for international students, what we know is it's a, firstly, it's a world-class education system. And the fact is we have um, universities that are in the top 100, um, but we also have a regulatory system, which means that um, every educational institution has to meet those standards across the board. So I'm not gonna say that for one moment that VIT is the University of Melbourne. Of course it's not. What we have to do is meet standards through the regulator that are in line with the standards across all institutions. And, uh, and you can be confident in making a choice for somewhere like VIT that you'll be meeting Australian standards and that will set you in good stead. As a location, and particularly in the current environment, uh, Australia is a very safe place to live um, with real economic opportunities, both in terms of employment uh, while you're studying, but also in a post-study environment. But I, I might talk a bit more about that in the context of what we're dealing with now in relation to COVID-19. Uh, it's also a multicultural environment. Uh, you know, roughly about 47% of Australians have come from overseas or have a parent born from overseas. Um, many languages are spoken um, throughout um, uh, households uh, within uh, our um, states and, and territories. Uh, and it's a community where it is overwhelmingly welcoming. Uh, and also, uh, I think it's something like six of our cities are rated in most livability um, across the top 40 cities in the world. So it's a great place to live. It's a great place to learn. Uh, and it provides you with opportunities as part of that experience in an environment where you can feel that you'll be safe um, and able to uh, actually um, expand your education, um, but also build on those opportunities, both during your study, but also potentially afterwards. Um, when you go then on from that, I guess the question is what's happening now? And the problem with, I guess, that is in a lot of respects, it's changing almost on a daily basis. So I can say things to you now about where we're up to in Australia and I will, uh, but I have to say to you that things will change. I guess when I look at it from an Australian point of view with respect to COVID-19, uh, we've been particularly successful here uh, in comparison to almost anywhere else in the world with respect to actually uh, dealing with minimising cases uh, and ensuring that people's health is a significant um, component of their um, of the livelihood that they have here. Uh, and just to give you some comparisons, and I just picked some of the major countries that if you like, you may be considering so I've just chosen the US, the UK, Canada, and Australia. And just, I'll just give you three statistics to give you an idea of the difference of what you're dealing with. Um, at the moment, in the US, um, as of today, there had been 10,708,630 cases, 247,397 deaths. And to give you a relevant comparator, um, cases per million of the population 32,283 per million. Now the UK, total cases 1,256,725, deaths 50,365, and cases per million 18,477. Canada, total cases 277,061, deaths 10,685, cases per million, 7,318. And that compares to Australia, total cases, 27,694, deaths, 907, and cases per million, 1,081. And if I just use that comparison of cases per million of the population, Australia, just over 1,000, Canada, over 7,000, the UK, over 18,000, and the United States of America, over 32,000. The reason that's important when you're looking ahead to the future and the sort of choices that you have to make is you've got to really think about what that means in the context of the future and what that will mean for the choices that you make. There's a couple of basic points to make there. 
issues like the state of the economy are directly related to the level of infection and disease. There's no doubt about that. It's showing through in all statistics. The likelihood of economies recovering, the likelihood of employment improving, et cetera, is all tied to that question of what is the economic situation that we're facing. And that economic situation is tied very much to the levels of infection. So where we are today puts Australia in a strong position in terms of what it's likely to be like in the future. A lot of other factors then come into play. I mean, there's been announcements recently about what's happening with respect to vaccines, and there's been some good news about that. And there would be, hopefully, we think, uh, opportunities for vaccines to be approved and to be distributed towards the first half of next year. But it's going to be a big effort, and it's going to take the whole world quite a while for that to actually all roll out. Whatever the changes are, what you can say as a starting point is Australia starts in a good position around the question of, of what might then happen from there. What you've also got in the situation with um, both the US, UK and Canada, they're entering into um, winter now um, and heading into a time when there is much more likelihood that there will be issues with respect to increases. And in fact, we're seeing that now there is effectively a second wave coming through very seriously across all three of those countries. That's also going to lead to changes potentially in how they operate. For example, in the US, uh, there were as a situation where um, many um, institutions um, have been accepting students and have been endeavouring to do face-to-face -face learning. But there has been some signs that that's being adjusted and there's certainly um, uh, situations being considered in the US about whether or not that's the way they continue to teach into the future because the level of infection is so bad. There are similar issues being considered in other locations. And that's, I think, something else that people should consider on the way through about what they might consider um, with the choice that they may make. Uh, the circumstances with Australia, as I said, we've gone very hard on regulating and ensuring that we control entries to the country and that we actually take a very strong um, uh, a sort of approach to actually ensuring that the disease is actually uh, limited as much as possible. And that's been very successful. But there's a, the side issue of that is we've still got international borders closed, so we're not letting students in at the moment. There are some pilot programs being looked at by some institutions in some states. Uh, they're still to be rolled out. And in terms of the future, uh, there is some chance that the borders will open in time, I think, for the second semester of um, 2021. Um, but at this stage, we'll have to wait and see. But I think that's the point about all of this. There are a range of variables there. The other point I'd make on the economic impact aspect of it is that with, su with such low levels of infection, the potential for us to be in a situation where we actually are able to have an employment um, improvement is stronger than many of the other uh, economies that I've spoken of, and therefore the potential for people to be able to gain employment while the, when they're able to come here is, I think, um, greater. So there's a number of factors there that I think are important. And of course, on from that, the government in Australia has basically opened up the capacity to be able to um, apply for and be granted visas. Um, and, uh, and that's certainly something that can be done now. And they're allowing that in the situation where people are engaged in online study. And I think there'll be more said about that by some of the other speakers, but frankly, there's a real opportunity there now for people who want to come to Australia and are looking ahead to be able to apply and hopefully receive a visa at a time when the numbers are down because of the overall international environment we're dealing with. And from that, to go into a situation where they already start to be able to complete their qualification um, and in the process of that, qualify for, um, uh, for work rights post-qualification should that be something which you wish to do. Uh, and that's part of, I think, what is an attractive environment um, for looking ahead um, with respect to study in Australia. Um, I might leave it at that for now. And I, at the end of um, proceedings, I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you for that great information. Um, Alan, um, let me now go to uh, Professor C to discuss about the student experience. All right, thank you. Uh, thank good you. morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to VIT. Now, I think the first question you should ask is, what's the student experience? 
all right? In other words, if you come to VIT, is it a great experience that you're going to have? Is it eh, that kind of experience? Well, maybe the best way to what summarize the student experience is by the students themselves. When we did a survey, and it's a national survey when they did it, they found about 90% of the students were really happy, not only with the teaching and learning, the resources that are there, and the opportunities they actually get. Now, this is a clear signal that VIT is actually giving you the environment for a proper education and a satisfying education as such. So if you come to us, what is my role? Well, my role is to ensure from the time you contact us to the time you graduate, you have a good time in terms of your education at this institution. It means in your classes, do we have high standard of teaching and learning? Yes, the answer is yes. We even actually in this COVID situation introduced uh, an engaged uh, teaching and learning, which resulted in students really happy with the environment. But we care for our students. So what we did is we got our counselors. Our counselors actually contacted individual students to ensure that you were doing all right in this COVID situation. And in many cases, we're in lockdown situations like in many other countries. We made sure we actually contacted them regularly to find out how they were progressing and if they needed any further help from us. So we looked after the students to make sure. Our CEO actually gave a number of scholarships for our students, all right, because of the situation where there was a lockdown, some of them lost their jobs, some of them had issues from their home to actually uh, what send money over. There were the scholarships as such to help these students to pay some amount, some part of their uh, tuition fees as such, anyway, or to meet their expenses in terms of day-to-day uh, -day living. So VIT has a reputation within Australia in looking after the students to making sure the students achieve the best they can. And, and we have academics, lecturers, which put in the extra time. You are able to contact your lecturers and our classrooms are not that big, which means you got an advantage of, this, of the lecturer or the academic getting to know you, all right? It's a one-to-one -one environment. You can come in, and attend classes. If you don't attend classes, there's of course the online environment where you can actually see your lectures as well. But we always encourage our students to turn up in classes because when you turn up in classes, you have the ability to actually listen to your uh, teacher plus you have the ability to ask the questions live and get the information as you want. Now, are there any other activities? Now for your own inf uh, for your information, we started a cr cricket club this year. And the cricket club is going to be expanded to also the uh, Sydney campus. So the Melbourne campus, the students start playing, I believe, this weekend. All right. It was an uh, initiative of the students. They wanted to have a cricket uh, uh, club and have that game. And we, uh, VIT has, has sponsored this particular team. And they are actually playing a number of uh, games over the summer period as such anyway. So we look after students. We want to make sure that you have an environment. You have a time with us to gain the best education you actually can. A number of our students have gone on getting, getting the education to get employment as such. That Professor Arun Patel will actually cover that in terms of uh, internships and all that. But the total environment is an engaging environment. We are here to help, we are here to listen, but at the same time, we want to ensure that you come out as a successful student to achieve the dreams you actually have. So why don't you try VIT? I've been here for the last one year, but I've actually worked at universities. The smaller the class, the greater the contact, the greater the contact, the greater the uh, amount of understanding you get for the material. It is a great environment. Come and take a look. And we are right in the middle of the cities, both Sydney and Melbourne. And if you, if you get bored, the city is out there. Come and explore it. I'll see you if, when you turn up at VIT. All right, I think you're on mute. Thank you, Professor Seed, for those remarkable and sharing those information to our future students. So I believe, yeah, having um, being with VIT is a good experience for, for our students. 
Um, now let um, let me call on to Professor Arun to discuss about our courses pathway in courses and pathway internship. Thank you very much. Hi, um, Professor Arun. Hello. Thank you very much um, for introducing us um, and uh, uh, just um, <clears throat> in, in a continuation with Professor Sidner, uh, as we introduce ourselves, we have a range of programs at VIT. Um, it has a long history, uh, but if you look um, diversity as well as the range uh, of available accredited programs, you know, right from English language to master of information technology, the master's level. So uh, we cover uh, the, the broad range of Australian qualification framework, okay, which, which is, uh, and, and, and it has pathways within those qualifications. Okay? So we have also uh, vocational education and training programs on weight levels, um, ranging from uh, commercial cookery, uh, hospitality, Etc. Okay. Um, we have um, at higher education level, we have two extremely popular uh, programs in IT sector, which is, as you know, it's 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 a sector which is in demand um, in 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 terms of the current situation, etc. Uh, we have bachelor's program, bachelor of information technology and systems. Uh, you know, short form is BITS, and we have. Um, extremely popular also Master of Information Technology and Te Technology and Systems, which is MITS in short. We also have MBA program, okay? Um, and all these higher education programs are very, very popular. Um, as indicated in the beginning, um, in introduction, uh, we get students uh, from, you know, various countries, range of countries. Um, especially, uh, you know, just, touching upon some of the key points um, related to student experience, which is feeling, feeding in um, with our internships and, and our industry engagement, um, because that is uh, my portfolio. I take care of industry engagement um, and, and partnerships. Um, and I make sure that um, while you are here, students are here, they will have adequate um, exposure to Australian industry because the programs we have designed, the courses we have designed, they are industry focused and they're focused on the current needs of industry and which will also, you know, provide, a, you know, some sort of breach um, to the gap between the industry demand and, 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 and what is there available. Um, we also provide solid foundation to our students. So if students are coming here, and they are seeking for industry exposure um, or some sort of industry interaction. We have um, internship programs. Um, we have also industry projects in, in embedded in our courses or programs. For example, in, in our BEATS program, Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems program, there is a, is a component at the end of, of the course or program in the final year for two semesters, for example, semester five and six, students can do internship, okay? And we always encourage our students to, to volunteer, to come forward and um, opt out for, for, for internship projects because they are industry projects, they are real world uh, industry problems where you will have opportunity to interact with the industry, to work with the industry, to, to get some exposure with industry and to see how industry uh, problems can be solved, how industry problems can be tackled with your knowledge and so on. Um, students, they love it. Those students, they do internships, they engage themselves with such projects or industry projects. Um, the data has been shown that uh, do, those students perform academically perform very well, not only in those units or those subjects, project subjects, but overall performance, academic performance is always better uh, because they are committed and they learn a lot. Um, and, and, and that gives a uh, you know, lot of value to students because when they finish um, you know, any degree, whether it is BITS or whether it is meets with industry project, 
with some sort of internships, with some placements. Um, they have, you know, by the time they, they, they graduate, they have good understanding of postal in the industry or any industry. And in this, when they face go, go to industry for job, already industry have recognized their skills, industry have recognized their contribution and commitment, and it is very easy for students to get job. So there are great success stories uh, of our students, those who have done some industry projects, they have liaised with industries, they have also offered jobs in those industries because for, for industries, uh, they have seen our students and they say that, okay, this student as uh, this particular student when doing an industry project with us was fantastic. That student has adequate skills and knowledge and he or she knows how to apply that knowledge to real world industry problems. So there are lots of opportunities in MITS program, for example, Master of Information Technology Systems, we have capstan project. And many of our students, they love, they, they're really passionate to do industry projects. And they, you know, they, they, they seek some real world challenging projects uh, with our academics and industry stakeholders. And when we provide them such projects, they enjoy it, those projects. And again, you know, they get very successful um, academic uh, career and which always help them, you know, getting some uh, secure job in, in our Australian industry. So in addition to that, we have, you know, the interaction of our industry people in varieties of way. They are here, it is, we invite them. We always exhibit our student projects to our industry partners. They come and they see what students are performing. Uh, they always give feedback to our you know, students looking at their projects. And that is where students enjoy because they see that, wow, these industry people, they might be hiring me tomorrow. They are coming here and giving me feedback on my own project. That is the wonderful thing. Uh, in addition, we always have uh, these industry experts um, coming to us and helping, looking at our curricula and even helping us giving some sort of webinars um, or, or even teaching. Um, engaging to, uh, to our students. For example, if you visit our website and if you look for our webinars, you know, there are great webinars which, which are available for you to access also now at this stage also at, uh, at present stage. And you can find these experts are highly recognized international experts where they bring their own experience from real world life and, and giving that experience to our own students and VIT community. So there are various ways um, and, and industry, definitely industry engagement um, in terms of projects or internships, in terms of placements, adds lots of values because every university nowadays, every institution worldwide, they are really focusing on employability skills um, and, 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 and job ready. When it comes, you know, you don't need to win. If you are really engaged yourself, you don't need to think too much whether I have achieved that because we have embedded that we have aligned in such a way that when you finish our program, you are job ready, okay? Or, and, and you are ready to face any challenge, challenges and, and, and go and get a proper job. So that is it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Arun, for those wonderful information and encouraging information that you have provided to our future students and to our agents. Um, we would like to um, call on Mamoon to give us some information about the VIT scholarship and fees. Um, over to you, Mamoon. Thank you, Anne. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, welcome to VIT. My name is Abdul Mamoon, the General Manager of Marketing of VIT, Victoria Institute of Technology. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, Shuprabhat. Ashakuri Shawai Halawatsen. আমি ভিআইটিতে কাজ করছি গত 16 বছর ধরে আমি চেষ্টা করব বাংলা এবং ইংলিশে দুই দুই ভাষাতেই সবার সাথে শেয়ার করতে আমার যে কথাগুলো আজকে সবার সাথে বলবো আজকে ম্যাক্সিমাম পার্টিসিপেন্টস এখানে দেখতে পাচ্ছি বাংলাদেশ থেকে আসছে বাট আমাদের কিছু গেস্টও আছে বিভিন্ন লোকালি সো আমি বাংলা ইংলিশ দুটো মিলে কথা বলবো শেষ হলে কোশ্চেন এন্ড অ্যানসার গুলো uh, go through Kurbo. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just share a, a quick PowerPoint presentation um, to go through the 
just a few key things. Most of them, uh, Mr. Allen, Said, and, and Arun already covered, but I will still uh, would like to actually go through a couple of things that might um, rephrase and, and actually uh, present in a way so that it actually captures what we trying to emphasize, uh, talking about the VIT and upholding VIT to our students from Bangladesh. The scene, um, the screen what we have today here just in front of you is actually this, some of the key things, why Australia? Why would you come to Australia today? Here, right? So there are some preferred destinations around the globe. Along with that, Australia is one of the third, uh, the preferred destination in the world. Um, and of course, there are some key factors and why. So you have opportunity to work um, here in Australia. You have 40 hours of fortnightly that you, ha you have opportunity to work. And as well as once you graduate, you have 485 visa where you can work um, and, and um, engage in the industry and work and get um, experience from that. So not many other country has got that opportunity. Um, Australia is offering that for students. And this is a job, is huge job factor, uh, the job um, that created this industry in here in Australia, over 100,000 people working in this industry. And we have more than half a million international students are currently studying at VI, uh, in Australia. And also, um, if we look at the, the government is actually putting more than $500 billion a dedicated research and development for this education sector. Now, of course, there are some noble, uh, the, they are from Australia, uh, who are from science and medicine. And of course, our education quality highly regulated by the education systems. Now, talking about uh, our quality education here in Australia, we are a provider been operating for over the last 20 years. And then, of course, maintaining a regulatory voting standards, and that's how we have grown so much started in Victoria, then we have campus in, um, in, in Sydney, now in Adelaide, and we have planned to grow more and more. Now, as of now, the VIT is offering um, higher education, vocational, various courses. But unfortunately, while VIT is growing so much um, due to this COVID uh, situation around the world, the situation is not in our control. Um, we see um, compared to other destination, preferred study destination, Australia is doing very well as, in, as far as I'm concerned um, and how we are controlling uh, this health system here in Australia, which means the opportunity for students and for this economy for this country are, will be greater than any other country in the world, I would say. I have a little graph that's to show um, that just an analysis, uh, Alan actually covered that. I just also wanted to um, give you a bit more uh, the emphasis of that. I just picked up the country like, you know, UK and USA and, and Canada compared to Australia beginning of this COVID as of now, how this um, uh, the pandemic managed Australia. Just to give you an idea, I'll just run this a quick video. Um, it's just going to give you a biweekly cas cases per million uh, from the January uh, 13th till the date yesterday. So let's have a look. I just, you can see Australia here, Canada there, and United States there. Of course, the, the, uh, the numbers are rising in, in January, um, and then we are in March. So United Kingdom in the top. And we need just to focus how Australia is managing over the period. Here we are, United Kingdom, United States, Canada, here we are. This is how we controlled our health system here in Australia. So obviously the government will have some plan how soon we can open um, the border and how we can tackle this, uh, the COVID in, in the control. And of course, all we are doing to, for health and well-being of these uh, people in Australia who are living. Um, 
I believe Australia's situation is much more better than other countries around the globe. And I believe the parents and students will have that sort of confidence in them to see where is the, the preferred destination that will take place in the upcoming next few years. Now, this is the situation about the country and the why Australia. Now I'll talk about the VIT. Of course, um, we wanted to highlight the few of uh, our uh, higher education provide uh, the courses that we provide for international students. And these are highly, uh, we focus in our IT sector. So particularly um, the IT in undergraduate and postgraduate, we have number of specialization that we offer that actually really attracts many students. And also uh, there is a lot of demand in that uh, area as well that I see. And then we also, um, the notice of the, look, if we look at the, the PR or the permanent residency demand or the in the country uh, around the world that we see the job occupation list and all that. So based on that, we can see the Australian, uh, the courses that we offer at VIT are very much in demand. So I'll just quickly run through the, the courses, course requirements, and then I'll jump to the fees and scholarships that are available for our students. So to start with, I have a Bachelor of IT. A Bachelor of IT, what we offer is with two specialization. One is a networking, another one is an application development. So this course, the way we designed that uh, especially with the networking, we are catering the, the course unit outline in a way to students to give hands-on experience through our capstone project or, or uh, some practical component that we offer. And at the same time, we, we offer uh, the capstone project to do through our partner um, industry where they can do some uh, do projects so that students can get hands-on experience and engage in the industry. As well as our networking is one of the popular program that we see in the recent students prefer uh, the specialization um, and also the application development is another uh, popular uh, specialization that we see. Now, in terms of the entry requirements, um, ILTS that we need uh, overall six, no less than 5.5 is the entry requirements for English um, and or equivalent to any other acceptable English um, that are available, for example, PTE and, and TOEFL and things like that. Um, during the pandemic, as you know, VIT um, also accept longer testing because of the, the COVID, many students are unable to go and do um, the IELTS uh, course or the, sorry, the exams. So dueling is another way to uh, examine the students um, the you know, English level. So that's something is also acceptable at VIT. So that's our Bachelor of IT. Now coming to the next program, which is very, very popular at VIT at the moment that we see as well. Um, that's also with the three specialization. One is a software engineering, architecture and analytics. Um, this course actually designed to cater for any discipline of the students wants to do. Like, you know, you're, you're from engineering, you're from science, um, any discipline of you from commerce, any discipline of the students can come and do this course. For them, they have to do 16 subjects. So, so once they come from, if they come from any IT background, they will have to do 12 subjects instead of 16, because we may be able to give them the four foundation unit, which are listed there in the screen, um, the credit transfer with, so that they will need to do only 12 subjects to graduate from this program. Um, in terms of English requirements, um, IELTS, we need 6.5 overall, no less than six or equivalent and or any other acceptable English that acceptable by the providers. Now that's the uh, entry requirements. Um, coming to your uh, the GTE, which means January temporary uh, entrant, that's something of course will be uh, supported by various agencies that are working with VIT. I'll come to that, who are our uh, the partners uh, currently working at Bangladesh as well as in Australia. Um, you can also talk to them, they are expertise there, they will be able to assist you with that. Now, coming to our another most popular course, MBA, um, which with uh, another four specialization that could 
you know, fit in. I think 80% of the students are from different discipline, including um, your finance and accounting, your information system, the management, and the hospitality and tourism. Um, so this specialization actually um, actually caters most of the students, uh, uh, except I think the health uh, related industry, but most of them are actually covers which are uh, most in demand. Now, coming to English requirements, English requirements is the same as our postgraduate and other program masters, 6.5 IELTS overall, no less than six is your requirements or equivalent to any other acceptable English that are acceptable. Now, these are the programs that we offer at VIT that are available uh, or suitable for Bangladeshi students who will be applying from Bangladesh um, yes, we have many other courses. They may not fit for our students from offshore is because of the GT in visa regulations and visa requirements and refusal rates and so forth. Yes, uh, we have other courses, but only I have highlighted what will attract our students, what will suit for you, you to come to here in Australia to study. Now, we talked about the VIT, we talked about other destinations around the world. Now, who are we, VIT? And we probably, you never heard about VIT. You heard about Monash, you heard about Latrobe, you heard about, um, you know, Swinburne. VIT is a, um, a provider been operating over 20 years at, as, at, um, as um, Anne mentioned, and also we, um, you heard from Seed or Arun. Um, we've been in the higher education industry for last over four years. Now, over the years, we have had really good response, especially in the onshore market. Now, we are trying to tap into the offshore market now because we have a number of courses. Now we are in Melbourne, now we're in Sydney and planning to open in other um, uh, you know, states as well. Now, um, that something is very, very important. Now, when we offer this program, um, I just wanted to tell you one thing is importantly that you need to hear out very closely. VIT is also regulated by, as mentioned, and Tax and Treasury Quality Assurance Authority. Um, they manage our standard as like university. If they have given certain standards for university, the same standards VIT has to provide or maintain. And that's how we have grown so much from um, 400 students. Now we are teaching close to 3,000 students at VIT. And many students are from VIT, been graduated and engaged in the industry. We have many students from Bangladesh and they have graduated and they are working in the industry as well. Now, how can I prove that, right? So you might ask questions, oh, Mamoon, um, just tell me, how do you benchmark your standards and how do, you, how, do you, how do I believe in that? Yes, I can show you something. Uh, there's something here. Um, Quilt, right? The quality indicators for learning and teaching. They are uh, and not a government body, but regulated by the government, right? So what they do is they regulate or they get their ex students' experience right from the day they commence. And guess what? Not only did the day they graduate, they also check how and when they engage in the industry. So the entire journey from the day they commence the course until they engage in the industry, the entire educational experience, this quilt body, take the survey from international students and they publish that on the public. And this is something that what you can see in the screen is the overall, uh, the later year, that's the percentage is 75%. Um, the undergraduate total overall, uh, the quality of educational experience, it's 78% and postgraduate work, which is 76%. Now we looked at VIT, look at where we are sitting. We're sitting at 76.9, which is, I think is, is quite significant, a, a, like a institute, which you never heard of, and guess what? I'll come to the fees and scholarship that we offer. They will be, you'll be more surprised. Um, yes, this is how I can explain. This is how I can, um, you know, uphold our quality of education that we've been offering for our international students. Now, um, I'm, I'm sure there's there's many students are waiting to hear what is our fees, what are our scholarships, and you've been hearing about hundred up to hundred percent scholarships. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so let's. Um, How's our time going, um, Anne? Um, we're not too far away, right? Uh, yeah, we have only okay. eight minutes to go. But all yeah, right, all right. On. I'll be very quick. Um, so Bachelor of IT, that what you have seen, overall fees or the actual fees is 8,500 per semester, um, which comes to 51,000 per year. Now, VIT is offering 
for offshore students, 25% scholarship, which means that you will only pay 6,375 per semester. 6,300 is the fees for semester, and all you need to do maintain each semester only 50% course progress, which means if you do four subjects, only you have to maintain 50%. It's not a high achieving score that you have to maintain 80%, 90%, nothing like that. Only you do maintain your course progress, which is your visa requirements anyway. So 6,375 is your uh, the Bachelor of IT course fees and Masters of IT is 7,800 per semester and an MBA is only $6,000 with 50% scholarship that we are offering for them. Now, coming to 100%, this is what I have been hearing and getting a lot of texts and a lot of inquiries um, from many students, my friends and relatives, um, that what is that, what is 100%? So, Amraj 100% scholarship to Dichi, Bangladeshi student, Jonah Sheta Hoche, Amraj Hon, student application Gulu Pabo, application Gulu Deke, Jineki, high achieving students, Bangladesh Teke, Taki Amra 100% scholarship, the Hobe, the entire course, Jonah. It is the Bachelor of IT, which which means we will give $51,000 of scholarship or to the scholarship bachelor of IT, $48,000 if student comes for masters uh, of IT or MBA. So, but the entry requirements, as I said, it will be a panel, but you need to apply with the high achieving students. Uh, there will be a committee. They will announce the, uh, the scholarship that will, have, uh, will, be, will be able to offer. Now, again, still you have other students. I think um, the fees, what we have is very, very competitive. Um, and also um, it will be affordable for you to study at VIT. And as I said, there's a lot of um, things that Sid and Arun and and, and Aaron, um, uh, Ellen mentioned about the quality of teaching and learning and all other, uh, the facility and the quality services that we offer. Um, that's something I'm sure you'll be able to take advantage from VIT. And thank you very much. Onek dhonnobad. Apne jodi kono question thake, abushu e chat box mo apne ra question korte parven. Next ten ten minutes mo tamne chasta ko bogulo cancel kora jeno. Dhonnobad. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Mamun, for those brilliant information about VIT and our courses, and obviously with our promising scholarship that VIT can offer. So um, thank you for all the speakers. May we now go on to our question and answers? Um, let me check on the um, chat box that we have. So for everyone that are um, in this um, chat room, so if you can um, write down your questions, so we may be able to address it and ask our speakers to reply with that. And I'll just jump in there. Uh, guys, my name is Rohit. I also represent VIT. So because we don't have much time, I, it's, it's okay if you guys raise your hand and start asking the question rather than typing. Um, just, just feel, feel to ask anything, students, agents, yeah, and good. likewise. Yeah. Thanks, Rahit. So I have one question in here. So, um, what is the GPA requirements for hundred percent scholarship? I will, I will take that one. So the GPA yeah. uh, is there's no requirements as long as you meet our entry requirements. There will be a panel or the committee will look into the number of applicants that we receive from Bangladesh and highest achieving students okay. will get their award. If anything want to add, uh, um, CD, you can add, please. No, that's absolutely right. It's the highest achieving student uh, among all in, in that region that applies, yes. Thank you for that. Another question from uh, Tejul from Chittagong. Um, is VIT offering a quarantine facility from offshore students? Ellen, do you want to take that? You're on mute. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we don't have at this stage quarantine facilities ourselves and we don't know as yet what will be happening at that time with respect to what the government will be providing. Uh, essentially what's happening in Australia at the moment is, is a, a very centralised system uh, around the question of dealing with the issues of people arriving from overseas, but there's also some discussion around the question of um, that being provided through some institutions 
Uh, there's also some talk about it being done um, on a much more electronic basis. So there's some talk about uh, having a situation where people arrive that they'll be able to um, uh, they'll be able to isolate at home, um, but they may well have to carry a um, for a period of two weeks. They may well have to have a um, an electronic um, monitor. So so that's going to evolve over time. And um, frankly, we're looking at, um, I think, no earlier than probably the middle of next year. And, and a lot's gonna happen over, that, over those months. Um, and we'll have to wait and see how that actually develops. Thank you, Alan. Um, another question from um, one of our attendees is, um, is this scholarship 100% percent I mean like is this a hundred percent scholarship for three years for the full degree or is it for only for one year um it will be applicable for the entire course um uh, but you need to maintain satisfactory which means a high extension each semester to maintain that scholarship for the throughout the course but we will offer that for the entire course of course not only mm -hmm. for the first yeah. semester the, the the conditions of the scholarship will be stated so if you maintain that standard you will get that scholarship continuously yeah yeah i think uh, a follow-up question from Faisal from Kotogram, um, what are the criteria to get this 100% scholarship? I think Mamun has already answered that, but um, another question is, um, is there any other scholarship that VIT is offering? Yes, we do. Um, as we covered uh, the previous slide that we have up to 50% scholarships uh, that are available for our upcoming intake um, students, which means um, the general scenario, for example, our uh, MBA, uh, the 12,000 tuition fees the per semester uh, for four subjects. Now we are offering only um, uh, $6,000 for this year for subject. But again, that uh, the scholarship will be applicable for your entire course. How we have designed, as I said, it will be uh, completely on your uh, the performance. Each semester, you will uh, undertake four units or four subjects. All you need to do uh, to maintain your scholarships, you need to pass two subjects uh, to again and gain that scholarship on your subsequent intake. So when you apply, once you meet our entry requirements by default, we will apply or give you the first semester scholarships Hello. to your tuition fees, and then it will uh, follow through your subsequent semester. Thank you. Um, let me interrupt with the question and answer that we have. Um, I think we have um, a testimony from a current student that we have from Bangladesh, um, everyone. So if we can um, hear with uh, Sujan Bishwa. Did you unmute Suyun Bichwa? You need to unmute maybe. Um. I, I have a question. Hello. Okay, yeah, sorry, it's okay. Uh, I think uh, Suyun is not, um, not here today. So um, yeah, what's your question? Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Noor Nobi. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the uh, visa, um, visa availability i mean uh, recently uh, many students um, of my friends they are uh, applying for canadian visa for this but they are getting rejected uh, most of them due to their bank solvency issue so uh, how much bank solvency issue uh, this is not the university related question i know but uh, how much i have to show uh, bank solvency uh, uh, for this Okay, Mr. Yes. I'll take that in, um, that question. Um, we do not uh, authorize to give any migration related advice, but however, um, I would suggest you to uh, discuss with one of our agency uh, who are uh, located. It could be, uh, if you're from Chittagong, I think uh, the StudyNet and PFC and, and, and also a few other agencies that are available to get suggestion from that. But as far as you can, as I concern, the tuition fee, is one year tuition fee and one year living cost. That's something that you need to provide when you apply for a visa. Uh, another question uh, I can ask. Uh, sure. That is uh, uh, one of your uh, speakers uh, talking about the um, uh, industrial, uh, uh, industrial experience or industrial linkage after the study, post study. So how is it likely I can get a job after completion of my degree from VIT? Um, Arun, you want to take that? 
hello yes i will take that yes um so so as i said um can you hear me yeah hello yeah I, yeah i hear can, can you just mute yourself because there is a lot of background uh, yeah that's fine so yeah as i already mentioned um industry engagement is embedded in curricula but what you are asking is is post study so we have also support as i said we um, make sure that all you know employability skills um, are embedded incorporated in our curricula and by the time you finish you know gra you know graduate um, you know we have industry connections also uh, we have lot of industry networks and we have also uh, we are engaged with industry and we ourselves vit we advertise lot of job offers from them so if there is a support required in terms of you your preparation uh, after graduation um, you know yes as a, as even alumni as or or when you submitted your um, you know final uh, examination or final unit you are waiting for graduation and until that period if you need some sort of support uh, we vit definitely provide that support and we connect you to industry right from you were writing your cv or announcing or or uh, polishing your cv to you know uh, uh, english language or interview skills we provide those skills as and and when students are required and they are, they are seeking for so we have mechanism we have systems in place and yes post study also we provide support if students ask and if students uh, you know uh, seeking for uh, if I, if i may add one more thing arun thank uh, you uh if if i may add one more thing i think one of the things we do is when you get your placements many of the students who actually what perform really well get job offers from those placements itself so yeah. i think it's those who decide to go into those internships and perform well already you've got one foot in the door in the in the, in the industry itself exactly yeah uh thank you for your answer thanks everyone yeah Sorry, um, Sujan is just here, so he may be able to give us, um, you know, testimony about his study experience with VIT. Um, I know we're running out of time, Sujan. I can give you. No, no worries, no worries. I'm here. Hello, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Uh, first of all, I introduce myself. I'm a student. Um, I'm MD Sujan Biswas, and student of VIT. I'm a student of Masters of Information Technology, and this is my uh, second last semester. So in my uh, experience in VIT, uh, now I'm explaining in the Bangla uh, because it's all the audience, most of the audience in Bangla. That's so why maybe I, if I'm explaining in Bangla, it's better for the, all the, uh, all the, all the bodies, I think, I think that. So first of all, when I was in Australia, I tried to go to Australia. This time, I was in the Monash University, and then I was in Monash. After one semester, I was in the Monash University, and I was not capable for this subject. So I'm very depressed in this time. But, I was transferred to VIT and when I was VIT transferred to VIT, in the facilities is the same as like the same. What do we think? First of all, we think about the university, big campus and everything, but not like that. Overseas study is not easy. It's very hard for the university and VIT is the same level of study because I'm right now I'm studying in VIT. So I have two experience, one experience for previous experience for Mona Shendana right now is VIT. So education is the same as education and study is the same level of same category. So and facilities is, আমরা কি চিন্তা করি একটা ইউনিভার্সিটিতে কি থাকবে একটা ল্যাব থাকবে আমরা ইউনিভার্সিটিতে ক্লাস করব বিগ হল থাকবে সেম এজ লাইক ভিআইটি আমিও ভিআইটি তে আছি সেখানে কিন্তু কি আছে লাইব্রেরি আছে এন্ড দেন কম্পিউটার ক্লাব আছে ক্রিকেট ক্লাব আছে সো ভিআইটি ফ্যাসিলিটিস এর দিক থেকে আমার মনে হয় অলমোস্ট সিমিলার এন্ড মাই এক্সপেরিয়েন্স ইজ গুড এক্সপেরিয়েন্স ইন ভিআইটি এন্ড 
another thing is that uh, jodi amra try kori je uh, thik ache ami vit te ashtechi amar ami ami kokhono chinta korte partechi na je keno vit te jabo ha vit te ei jonnoi ashte hobe karon ami ami personally believe kori is uh, vit education uh, is masters ami jeto je subject ta te porchi amar kache mone hoyse je teacher onek supportive ar ekhane ja je somosto teacher ra amader class gula niche सेम एज इनिटी टीचर तरह क्लस प्रैक्टिकल क्लस बेनिफिट सब दिखाई एज ए सार्टिफिट स्टैंडार्ड अफ इनिटी सार्टिफिट सो भिटी अलसो एज ए सेम स्टैंडार्ड अफ इनिटी सार्टिफिट एज वो सो फ्लेक्सिबल निर्दिष्ट बजेटर मध्य स्टाडी करते मेलबोर्ने मन कम्यूनिकेट करते डकुमेंट मी ट्रु डिस्कशन अबाउट दिस दिस वीजा और द इनफॉरमेशन 
there is an opportunity that you can also take this uh, information from your relevant uh, the agency that are located in your home country. Um, we have our uh, the partners are like you know Pakistan, PAPC, Stardinet, um, HBD, um, and 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 Apollo. There are many um, the providers or agency working for VIT. But besides that, if you have any questions whatsoever um, at all about your visa or applications or anything like that, please send an email um, um, and then we'll be able to assist you further on that. Um, and um, are we worry about that uh, with the time and is there any other questions we're missing out or anything else um, we need to cover? Any other questions? Uh, we probably have to, uh, you know, take them all and then we'll reply them after this session. Yeah, and, and can I just step in? There's an important question there. What's the maximum universe you can do when you're actually remote learning? You can take the full load if you want to, actually, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for four units for the uh, uh, mid, uh, so bits. And I think I'm not sure which one you're applying for, and it's three or four depending on your uh, mids, depending on your qualification as such. Uh, we, we encourage you to actually start the process to get to do the remote learning because you'll be well ahead of the students by the time the borders are open. Absolutely. And, and these actually count towards your work rights in Australia. All right, the, currently the, what the government has made that ruling by saying that if you start online, you get the visa, you start online, you can come in and still work and nothing is going to be taken away. And yes. the faster you do it, whether it's one, two, three or four units, you're well ahead when you come in, you finish faster and remember, I think Alan mentioned this, you know, there, there, there is currently a, a, a drop in international students who are here. As you come in, that actually picks up, you finish faster, the job market gets strong and you're just in time to get the swing upwards to get employment as such anyway. The yeah, chances of employment point. are much very better. Yeah. 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 Um, um, any yes. um, yes, Mamun? No, proceed, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, sorry, I, Anne. Yes, Aaron. Yeah. There is one question regarding internship. Also, um, very quickly in, in chat box. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what are the internship opportunities? Um, and With also, VIT, yeah. And yeah. then, what are the job prospects? What are and, the job prospects? Um, is it a paid internship? Yeah. So, um, majority of internships are unpaid, but however, there are instances when. Uh, it, it's voluntary for employers or voluntary for uh, industries uh, to pay, you know, as, you know, if they want. Yes, there were inc incidences that, uh, you know, industries uh, have offered some, uh, you know, the, the pay, uh, you know, uh, remuneration, I would say, for students for their projects, you know, if they have that, that um, provision. So that is fine. Um, we don't make it compulsory for industries, but we keep it open. It's up to industry uh, to do that and, and they do that. Um, opportunity wise, I would say that um, um, the, the previous data, for example, the last a semester before, there were around 100 students, um, you know, at, at a time uh, from both Melbourne and Sydney, they were doing internships, okay, out of uh, the whole class. So uh, opportunities are there. Uh, there was one incidence where uh, we had, um, you know, uh, Plenty of projects, but but we we ran out of students also. Okay, there were projects. Uh, industry were saying that we have these projects and we need some more students, but you know we we ran out of students because those are the eligible students uh, supposed to be doing internships. So there are uh, you know plenty of opportunities for industry internships, and uh, we we make make sure that we match you know students with with the internship uh, projects and so on. Uh, in terms of job opportunities, yes. Um, you know, right now, those programs which we have in, in especially in higher education uh, sector, uh, where which beats and meets, that is where, as you know, because of the COVID and, and, and pandemic and, and uh, everyone, every industry is, uh, you know, trying to make sure that how uh, working from home, how remotely remote work can be facilitated, uh, how IT can be incorporated in, in their uh, you know, you know, industry profile and so on. So there are plenty of opportunities and consistent opportunities are there, especially for MITS and, and BITS courses. And, and as Mamun mentioned about the specialization, these are specializations in demand. So when we designed these programs and courses, uh, we really looked at what industry would be requiring and what are the industry demands. And that's why 
our graduates you know they don't need to wait too much you know to to just uh, you know go to the industry there are prospectors a lot of prospectors especially in in these areas uh, can i can i just summarize something there uh, arun yeah. the thing is don't don't think about the the pay the payment for the internship it's because the internship is that experience that gets you the final job and the ability for you to if you want to stay in australia yes so take the internships do the projects well and that itself it's your ticket for a better chance to get a job out there because what the industry is looking for is that experience that industry experience that will put you ahead of every other person who just comes without any experience so whatsoever good okay back to ann Thank you for all those information. And um, I guess all questions have been answered. Um, we do um, left our email address in here. If you have some questions or if you'd like to send us our private emails, we have um, Mamun's email address on Tanvir, and you can um, also make a query at enroll at vit.edu.au. So I would like to. Um, Appreciate for all the attendees from Bangladesh, our, our VIT colleagues, our all our speakers, and um, thank you for attending this. And uh, we welcome you, everyone. <laughs>